Coins are more than just money. They hold stories of civilizations, cultures, and the passage of time. In Africa, ancient coins serve as tangible pieces of history, offering glimpses into the rich heritage of the continent. Ancient African coins were used as a means of trade and exchange in various regions across the continent. These coins were crafted from different materials like gold, silver, copper, and sometimes even cowrie shells. African coins originated from diverse cultures and civilizations, each with its unique designs and symbols. For example, the Aksumite Empire and present-day Ethiopia minted coins depicting the ruling monarchs. Inscriptions in GS script and symbols like the cross representing Christianity. In West Africa, the Ghana Empire produced coins known as Mankalis made from copper and brass. These coins often featured intricate geometric patterns and symbols that represented the wealth and power of the empire. These ancient coins were not only a medium of trade but also held cultural and historical significance. They reflected the economic prosperity, political power, and religious beliefs of their time. For instance, the use of gold in many African coins symbolized wealth and prestige, reflecting the richness of the continent's resources. Preserving these ancient coins is crucial to understanding Africa's history. Archaeologists, historians, and numismatists coin experts study these artifacts to unravel stories of ancient civilizations and their interactions with neighboring regions, the study of African ancient coins faces challenges due to the scarcity of well-preserved artifacts and limited historical records. However, ongoing archaeological excavations and discoveries continue to expand our knowledge about these ancient currencies. Appreciating the value of these coins goes beyond their monetary worth. They serve as a link to Africa's past, fostering a sense of cultural identity and pride among communities. Museums and collectors worldwide recognize the significance of these artifacts, preserving them for future generations. Now we will see the intriguing world of Aksumite coins' ancient treasures that whisper tales of a remarkable empire in Africa. These coins, crafted centuries ago in the lands of present-day Ethiopia, hold within them the secrets and stories of a civilization steeped in history and splendor. Let's embark on a journey to discover the significance, beauty, and cultural importance of these fascinating Aksumite coins. Aksumite currency was coinage produced and used within the kingdom of Aksum or Aksum centered in present-day Eritrea and Ethiopia. Its mintages were issued and circulated from the reign of King Indubis around AD to 70 until it began its decline in the first half of the 7th century where they started using dinar, along with most parts of the Middle East. During the succeeding medieval period, Mogadishu currency minted by the Sultanate of Mogadishu was the most widely circulated currency in eastern and southern part Horn of Africa from the start of the 12th century. Axum's currency serves as an indicator of the kingdom's contemporary cultural influences and religious climate first polytheistic and later oriental Christianity. It also facilitated the Red Sea trade on which it thrived. The coinage has also proved invaluable in providing a reliable chronology of Axumite kings. Due to the lack of extensive archaeological work in the area, pre-coinage period, Though the issuing of minted coins didn't begin until around 170, metal coins may have been used in Axum centuries prior to centralized minting. The Periplus of the Erythrian Sea mentions that the Aksumite state imported brass which they used D for ornaments and for cutting as money, and they imported a little money denarian for use by foreigners who lived there. It can be inferred, therefore, that early Aksumite kings located on the international trading waters of the Red Sea, recognized the utility of a standardized currency for facilitating both domestic and international trade influences. Though Aksumite coins are indigenous in design and creation, some outside influences encouraging the use of coins is undeniable. 
By the time coins were first minted in Aksum, there was widespread trade with Romans on the Red Sea. Kashana or Persian influence also cannot be ruled out, Roman, him you right? And Kashana coins have all been found in major Aksumite cities. However, only very small quantities have been attested and the circulation of foreign currency seems to have been limited. Though South Arabian kingdoms had also minted coins, they had already gone out of use. By the time of certain Aksumite involvement in South Arabia under GDRT, and only very rarely produced electrum or gold denominations silver mainly in Saba and Himyar, while bronze in Hadramaut, making influence unlikely. The major impetus, however, was not emulation but economical. The Red Sea and its coasts had always been an international trade area and coins would greatly facilitate trade and wealth in the now world power. Despite these influences, the coins were of genuinely indigenous design, and foreign influences were relatively weak and few in number. Pre-Christian period Aksumite currency were first minted in the later stages of the growth of the empire. When its golden age had already begun, the minting of coins began around 170, beginning with the reign of Indubis. Gold Gold seems to have been acquired from a number of sources. Gold probably came from Sasu southern Sudan as well as more nearby Ethiopian sources, though the latter isn't well documented for the north. A gold trade from the southern areas of Ethiopia such as the medieval province Kingdom of Inaria has been attested from the 6th century i.e. from the writings of Cosmas Indicaplusts and continued through James Bruce's day 18th century. Ethiopian trade with modern Zimbabwe for gold was also a source. Gold also came from more northerly sources such as Gojjam, Bayalands, and what is now Eritrea, though the latter two are less certain. However, a recent gold exploration assay in Eritrea has found significant gold deposits at Embadurho, and deposits are also attested at Zara in central western Eritrea, silver, and others. While local sources of gold are attested during the Aksumite era, silver seems to have been rarer in Aksum. No mention of silver mines in the region exist until the 15th and 16th centuries. Though silver was imported as attested by the Periplus of the Erythrian Sea, given the preponderance of silver coins, it could not have been the only source of silver in Aksum. Furthermore, a significant number of the silver coins contain gold inlays presumably to increase the value, which would have been unnecessary if silver were so rare that it had to be mainly imported. Silver may have been obtained from the refinement of gold, which sometimes occurs naturally with silver in an alloy called electrum. Copper and bronze do not seem to have existed locally in the Aksumite Empire, though they were noted as imports in the Periplus of the Erythrean Sea. Value? Though the gold coins were certainly the most valuable issue, followed by the silver one, the exact relationship between the three issues gold, silver, and bronze is not known. The supply of gold was closely controlled by the Aksumite state, as noted by Cosmas Indicaplusts, and other precious metals were undoubtedly also closely controlled, allowing the Aksumite state to ensure the usage of its currency. The quality of the Aksumite coins were also closely controlled, usually of high purity. For example, the lowest purity of gold recorded thus far for Aphilus is 90%. Early issues were often very close to their theoretical weights, and some were even over. However, the weight of the coins tended to decrease over time. This may have reflected a desire to conform to the Diocletian monetary reform of 301, when the Aureus was decreased from 160 of a Roman pound to 172. Despite decreases in weight, the purity of the gold was largely maintained, even by later kings. The relative abundance of Aksumite coins as well as the many that have yet to be found indicate that Aksum must have had access to large quantities of gold design. The coins were often inscribed in Greek as much of its trade was with the Greek-sized Orient, 
Later inscriptions made more use of Gs, the language of the Aksumites, perhaps indicating a decline in its use for more international trade I. E. With Rome and India, the obverse of the coins would always feature an image of the king almost out, ways in profile wearing either a crown or helmet out regnal headcloth. The headcloth had some image perhaps representing pleats, rays, or sunburst in the front, as well as the tied end of a cloth or fillet to hold the helmet or headcloth in place. Most coins also included an inscription usually in Greek, meaning King of Axum or King of the Axumites. However, many coins were also minted anonymously or even posthumously, especially during the 5th century. Inscriptions on the coins could include a busy name in addition to the king's personal name. Busy names were used more often in conjuncture with personal names on earlier coins. While the epithets were more common in later years, being the only inscribed name in a few sources, Greek text was used in conjunction with G.S. script inscriptions, but was the only language used on the gold coins. With the exception of the G.S. language coins of Wazeba and M.H.D.Y.S., over time, the Greek used on the coins gold, silver, and bronze deteriorated, indicative of Axum's decline. Moreover, beginning with M.H.D.Y.S. for bronze coins and Wazeba for silver coins, G.S. gradually replaced Greek on the legends, mottos. Axumite coins used a number of mottos throughout the period in which they were minted, beginning in the early 4th century. Around this time, numerous anonymous bronze coins with simply Basilius king on the obverse were minted by either King Azana or one of his successors. The coins bore the first example of an Axumite motto on the reverse, May this please the people. It was later written in unvocalized G.S. and under King Caleb also may this please the city or country. Similar mottos were used by other kings. Coins of the early 7th century Emperor Arma had inscribed on the back. Kings. And Ibis. Indubis, the first known Aksumite king to mint coins, focused almost entirely on his image on both the obverse and reverse. The images were of his head and upper half of his chest in profile, wearing a regnal headcloth or helmet and abundant jewelry. In addition to inscribing his regnal name, Endy Biss also noted his Bissy name, a practice continued by his early successors but often missing in later coins. The Bissy name was a sort of tribal affiliation or ethnicon that was different for every king. Andy Biss also emphasized his religion through the pre-Christian symbol of the disc and crescent. As a propaganda method, a purpose which the coins already served, a second motif used by any Biss, and continued by following coins was that of two, though sometimes one in later years. Ears of barley or wheat around the image of his head and profile, though no inscriptional evidence exists given its prominent position around the image of the king. The two ears of barley or wheat may have been representative symbols of the Aksumite state. The later coins would be smaller. Andy Biss chose the Roman Aureus to standardize Aksumite coin weights. Against, with gold issues at half Aureus around 2.70 grams, Aphilus. Whereas all of Indubis's coins feature the king with a headcloth or helmet, Aphilus's coins show the king wearing an impressive high crown on top of the headcloth. The crown featured colonnades of arches supporting high spikes, on top of which rested large discs of unidentified composition. In addition to the crown and headcloth, Aphilus's coins included further images of regalia, such as a spear, a branch with berries. The depiction of the arms, the addition of tassels with fringes to the imperial robe, and more jewelry such as amulets and bracelets. Despite this innovation, Aphilus continued to use the image of himself in the regnal headcloth and some coins. Sometimes as the reverse, while his crowned image is only found on the obverse. One of his issues included his frontal image on the obverse, which ended with his reign and was only revived by the late kings. Other minting features of Aphilus were also abandoned by later rulers. One of these was the use of just the inscription King Aphilus as the reverse of a coin, 
the only purely epigraphical side ever used on an Aksumite coin. The other was his use of a single ear of barley or wheat as a reverse, though his use of two ears circling around the king's image continued. Aphilus introduced a number of different standards for all three metals, some of which lasted through to the 7th century while the use of others ended with his reign. His new gold coins issued in conjunction with the older of a quarter aureus and eighth aureus were soon abandoned to each are known from only one specimen and one sixteenth aureus coins have been found. Though these are more likely to be deliberate debasements to increase profit, Aksumite gold was generally very pure, however, Aphilus's silver coin, however, issued at half the weight of the former became the new Aksumite standard for silver up until the end of coinage. The older coin was presumably more valuable than needed and the new coin remedied the problem. Aphilus's bronze issue, however, was instead doubled to 4.83 grams. The coin's rarity may attest to its quick withdrawal from the market, as is assumed with his quarter aureus. These two issues are the only one of Aphilus's issues to portray him frontally, rather than in profile. Azana. During Azana's reign a major change in both the Aksumite kingdom and its coinage took place as a result of the change of the official religion to Christianity, one of the first states ever to do so. While Azana's coins in the first half of his reign are almost identical to those of Aphilus, barring minimal weight reductions those of his second half employ revolutionary designs. With his conversion to Christianity, Azana began to feature the cross on his coins, the first time the Christian cross had ever been featured in coinage in the world. Some of his gold Christian coins are of the weight before Constantine I's weight reform in 324, indicating a conversion before this date or perhaps a few years after. As the Aksumite coinage may not have changed weights immediately, along with the adoption of the cross on his coins came, of course, the abandonment of the star and crescent symbol on the coins. Later Christian coins reflect the adoptment of the 4.5 for G standard by Constantine, with theoretical weights and Aksumite coins likewise dropping to 1.70 grams for the gold coins. Coins of Azana without any symbol at all have also been found along with similar symbolist coins of his father, Ausenes. These may reflect a transition in the religion in Axum, when Frumentius was influencing Azana's father, in gathering Christians in the country giving weight to the writings of Rufinus. The lack of symbol altogether may reflect an uncertainty as how best to exhibit the change in religion of the Axumite state. Trade at the time of Axum's minting of currency, the state already had a long trade history with Greece, Rome, the Persian Empire, and India. That coinage began so late is in fact a little surprising. The late use of coinage may be attributed to the lack of a developed economy. Required for coinage to be accepted, most Axumite coins were found in the large trade centers with very few in remote villages where trade would be more through barter and not coinage-based. In fact, the motivation for Axum's initial minting of coins was for foreign trade. And markets, as evidenced by the use of Greek on most of its coins, moreover, gold coins seem to have been intended primarily for external trade. While copper and silver coins probably mainly circulated within the Aksumite Empire, as the gold issues generally specified King of the Aksumites as title of the Aksumite King, whereas the title of silver and copper issues generally only read King, international use of Aksumite coins seems to have begun early on. As coins of King Azana and even of King Aphilus, the second Aksumite ruler to issue coins, have been found in India, decline. During the 7th century, Aksumite power began to fail, and Ethiopian society began to withdraw further into the highland hinterlands, with the coastal areas becoming peripheral areas. The coins continued circulation but were restricted to more local areas such as Nubia, South Arabia and the Horn of Africa. Archaeology Due to the nature of the coins e.g. providing king's names, they have proved essential in constructing a chronology of the kings of Axum. 
An estimated 98% of the city of Axum remains unexcavated and other areas even more so. Through analysis of the number of coins produced and the style of coins, archaeologists have been able to construct a rough chronology, generally agreed upon until the late 6th and 7th century kings. Of the 20 Aksumite kings attested by their coins, inscriptions corroborate the existence of only two, who happen to be the most famous kings, Azana and Caleb, both of whose reigns were periods of exceptional prosperity during the height of the Aksumite kingdom. Many coins have been found in northern Ethiopia and Eritrea, the central region of Aksum. Though Aksumite coins are reported to have been found in Arato and Lalibela, many coins have been also found further afield. Numerous hordes of coins, always gold save one silver coin, have been found in southern Arabia, much more than in Aksum itself, attesting perhaps to an Aksumite presence in parts of the region perhaps, supporting the use of titles claiming control over parts of South Arabia from GDRT's time. The hordes may be the remnants of hordes left in Caleb's time perhaps used to pay soldiers, when it was under an Aksumite governor. Outside of the Horn of Africa and Arabian Peninsula, coins have been found as far as Israel, Mero, Egypt, and India. Silver and copper coins are mainly found in Aksum, though some can be traced to Palestinian pilgrim centers. In addition to historical evidence, the coin's use of Gs provides valuable linguistic information. Though rarely used, the vocalization of Gs sometimes employed on Aksumite coins allows linguists to analyze vowel changes and shifts that cannot be represented in the older Semitic abjads such as Hebrew, Arabic, South Arabian, and earlier, unvocalized Gs. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the fascinating world of Aksumite coins. These ancient treasures hold tales of an incredible empire, its leaders, and the beliefs that shaped their civilization. If you enjoyed learning about these remarkable coins, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more explorations into history's hidden gems. Stay curious and keep discovering the wonders of our past. Until next time, take care and keep exploring.